A few weeks ago, we took a look at what I think is a game changer for the smart home, the Akara FP1, a millimeter wave sensor capable of accurately detecting the presence of humans even when there is no movement. But the problem with that sensor is that number one, it's very difficult to get your hands on at the moment with supply shortages, and number two, it's not very cheap. So could I build my own sensor with similar results for a more affordable price? Spoiler, yes, and it's really good. I started researching millimeter wave DIY sensors, and after a quick Google search, I came across this millimeter wave sensor from DF Robot, which works on the 24 gigahertz spectrum, has a quoted range of nine meters, which is four meters more than the Akara FP1, and it had a nice, simple connection diagram for Arduino. And most importantly, had a rather detailed wiki page, including some sample code. Looking at the code, it seemed really simple to work with, which is a real bonus, and at less than 30 pounds for one sensor, it was certainly worth a go. When the sensor arrived, I hooked it up to a Wemos D1 Mini, since that has a native five volts output, and the millimeter wave sensor requires 3.6 to five volts to operate. We can see from looking at the pinout on the sensor that it has six pins, VCC, ground, RX, TX, IO1, and IO2. This sensor uses UART for communication, and again, looking at the wiki page, it outputs a simple text string that lets you know if a human is detected or not. We can also see that the two IO pins will also output a high or low signal if the sensor detects movement, giving us two different ways to work with this sensor. You'll also notice the gold contacts on the sensor, and this is the front of it and where you will want to face the sensor towards the room for detection. I then loaded up the basic code from the DF Robot wiki page and checked to see if the sensor worked. Although this code is really basic and it doesn't connect to Wi-Fi so that you can output sensor information to Home Assistant, that's easy to add afterwards and does allow me to see how the sensor works and how to interface with it. Upon loading the code and opening the serial monitor, we can see that the sensor will output a zero for no presence detected or a one if presence is detected. Super basic and easy to understand, which is great. With the sensor working, I then started thinking about the connectivity, and my go-to method is generally to use MQTT, as that is universal, easy to implement, and I've used it in many DIY projects in the past. But before I did that, I just had a quick search to see if anyone had implemented this sensor with ESP Home, since I really like the ease of use and native integration with Home Assistant. And I came across this thread on the Home Assistant form from user CR Logic. And would you look at that? He is using the exact same sensor that I am and has provided a ton of detail and code to go along with it. This is amazing and he has done a really great job. And the thread itself is a really good read and has lots of information about various tests that he and other users have done and is super useful. CR Logic uses an ESP32 for his setup, however, where I am using an ESP8266, so I will talk you through my exact setup. I'm gonna recommend the Wemos D1 Mini, since that has a five volts output, which works perfectly with this sensor. Firstly, we need to work out or figure out the pinout first. There are actually only three pins that you need to use here, VCC, ground, and IO2. Using IO2 only will give you a binary sensor in Home Assistant that detects presence and works well. However, if you want to be able to adjust the cooldown period and detection distance, which the ESP Home Config allows you to do, then we need to also wire up the RX and TX pins on the board. The RX and TX pins on this sensor can be wired to many different GPIO pins on the Wemos, but the IO2 pin can only be wired to one pin on the Wemos which is GPIO 16 or D0. That's because IO2 needs to be connected to a pull down resistor to stop it floating. And the Wemos only has one pin, which is pull down, which is GPIO 16. With that in mind, and with the idea to keep this setup as small and compact as possible by stacking the sensor on top of the ESP rather than having them side by side, I selected D1 and D2 as my RX and TX pins on the Wemos and the reason for that will become apparent in just a second. I then soldered on header pins to VCC and ground, 
and RX and TX. And what this will do is line up perfectly with the 5 volts and ground pins, along with the D1 and D2 pins on the Wemos, meaning all we need to do is add a single wire for the IO2 pin. Using the header for these pins is ideal because it means that we can stack the sensor on top of the Wemos and it will nicely support the weight. Finally, I soldered a semi-flexible wire from IO2 to GPIO16 or D0 on the Wemos D1 Mini to finish off the connections. Next, connect the Wemos to your laptop so that we can upload the ESP home code onto it. If you're not sure how to install or create a basic configuration for ESP Home, then I'll have a full guide linked up here for you to follow along with. After creating a very basic config, paste in the code from the link in the video description into your ESP Home config, making sure to change the device name to suit. This code is based on CR Logic's excellent thread with the pinout changed for the Wemos D1 Mini, so all props for the code go to him and all of the contributors from that thread. Save the code and install it onto your Wemos and monitor the log output. If done successfully, you should see some output that looks like this. Notice the line of text being outputted every second. This is the raw string coming from the sensor, and don't worry, you don't need to do anything with this as it's all handled in the ESP Home config, but it is useful for debugging. Next, head over to configuration, devices and services, and your ESP Home node should have been automatically detected. Make sure to hit the configure button to finish adding it to Home Assistant. And once added, we can now go in and view the entities. You'll see that we have some parameters that we can configure called distance and latency. Distance is pretty self-explanatory here and allows you to configure the detection distance of the sensor. I would recommend not going above nine meters with this setting. I find that I got false ghost readings whenever I went above this. We also have the latency option and this is essentially the cooldown time from when it will change from detected to not detected after someone leaves the room. I would recommend not setting the latency too low though, so that the sensor doesn't flap and keep changing between on and off. Then we have our presence sensor, which is being detected from the IO2 pin on the board. Whenever someone is in the room or detected, this sensor will change to on, and whenever they leave the room, it will change to off. Give it a test and make sure everything is working as you would expect. All that was left to do now was to design and 3D print a case for the setup, which I'll leave down in the description, and let's see how it actually works. I was pretty blown away at not only how fast this sensor can actually make a detection, much faster than the three to five seconds of the FP1, but also how little motion it can actually detect. Like I can literally slide a couple of fingers into a room and it will manage to pick them up and detect them. I guess it's in the name, right? Millimeter wave, but still, it's kind of crazy. One of the things to note is that this will literally detect the movement from anything. So for example, if you have a fan spinning in a room, it's gonna detect that, or your blinds or curtain move with the wind, it will detect that, or if you open a door, it will detect that too. It's not smart enough to only look for humans, it will detect the movement of anything. So yes, it will detect the movement of pets. I know that was a question that lots of you had from the FP1 video. From my testing so far, it's also really solid at continuing to detect presence for hours on end when placed somewhere like your living room and is easily able to detect really small movements that a regular motion sensor wouldn't be able to. I also tried it in our bedroom and for the most part, it works really well, but I was able to get it to turn off if I held my breath or with very slight breathing. I know that sounds kind of silly as you would never do that, but it did result in some slight flapping overnight when we were asleep. The Akara FP1 does not suffer from this in my experience. Not sure if that's because it's a 60 gigahertz sensor compared to the 24 gigahertz of this sensor and it's able to detect even smaller movements, or it may just be that I need to adjust the position of my sensor to be more optimal. I could also adjust the latency to be a little bit higher and that would also probably fix it. I mentioned earlier about the speed. That was a big issue with the Akara FP1 is that it takes around three to five seconds before it will recognize that you are actually in the room. And then once it does, it works really well, but it does mean that it's not quick enough to use for motion lights. So is this problem solved with this sensor? 
Well, the DF robot sensor can detect really quickly. I would say on par with a regular motion sensor from my experience and testing so far, and certainly much quicker than the FP1. I would still want to pair this with a regular PIR motion sensor for turning on lights and then use this sensor for turning them off again. However, since this is a DIY project, there is no reason that you couldn't also add a PIR motion sensor into one of these using the other pins on the Wemos D1 Mini and have both of these working in this one unit. In fact, I believe that CR Logic has also been doing some research into this in one of his other threads on this subject, which is pretty cool. The funny thing is though, the millimeter wave that comes from the sensor actually bounces off walls and through doors if the distance is set correctly. Quite a few times when I was testing this, I would have to literally shut a door behind me to stop it detecting me when I was just outside of the room. So that means that in theory, if you dial in the distance correctly for your room, you could have this trigger when you were walking towards a room and literally a feet or two away from it so that the light came on just before you got inside of the room, which would really help to improve the detection and reaction speed even more than a regular motion sensor. One downside it has when compared to the FP1 is that it can't detect the direction of the movement. So if you remember, I mentioned in the FP1 video that it can detect when you're walking towards it or away from the sensor or left or right, whereas the DF robot sensor is unable to do that, it can only detect that there is some form of motion and not the direction. Finally, what about price? So the total cost for this thing was around £35, £30 for the sensor delivered and £5 for the Wemos. Obviously, I already had a 3D printer and a soldering iron and all of that stuff to make this, so your costs may vary a little bit there, but for the parts themselves, it is quite a bit cheaper than the Akara FP1 if you are willing to give it a go yourself. And of course, I'll have links to everything down in the description. I suspect that you guys are going to snatch up all of the stock of these like you always do, but it is available in quite a few different places and a few different retailers, so hopefully they will be restocked really quickly. All in all, this is a pretty cool little sensor, and I was surprised at how well it works and how fast it can actually detect the teeniest amount of motion. DF Robot actually suggests that you could place this under your bed for a bed presence sensor, which is a pretty neat alternative to using something like a load cell solution and could open up some really cool possibilities for automations. But what do you guys think about this sensor? Are you planning on picking one up for yourself or for a DIY project? And what else would you like to see this sensor do or be used for? Do let me know down in the comments. If you're looking for something else to watch, check out this video over here, where I show you how to make a super reliable DIY bed presence sensor, which is so good for automations. Make sure to drop this video a like and get subscribed, and I will see you in the next video.